So we can use this package and we can install it using npm, npm installing express. We can install it as a dependency or dev dependency. So we need to go to the command line. I've already created a folder structure here and we just run npm install. Well, first you need to create a package.json. So npm init minus y will, uh, will allow you to create that package.json. And you can view it here. Um, if you don't use a minus y flag, you'll need to step through each one of those. So now we're ready to install the package itself. npm install express. And this will go out and install all the packages we need uh, and all its dependencies. Of course, these packages come from npm uh, registry. And if you take a look at the express package itself, express.js, then you can kind of gauge whether or not this is a package um, that you can trust. And you can see there it's 25 million downloads per week. It looks like it's pretty well maintained with documentation. It looks like a package that we can trust. Uh, version 5.8, 4.18. And uh, it gives you quick start information on how to, how to use this guy. Um, so we have this installed and you can see we're at uh, version 4.18.3. And it looks like we we can we can start building this out. So what we want to do first is just create uh, a folder for modules. In our fundamentals, we went through require export, and we're building out a book module here. So first of all, we're going to just build some mock data that we'd like to return to through our API. So here's a, an array of books, title, author. A pretty standard JavaScript array, but it's because we don't have a database or a backend, we're just going to return this out to uh, to the caller. And of course, when we have a module, we need to export it. So we can so we're going to do modules.export, and then we'll just export the books, and that in a way makes it public. Otherwise, if we didn't do it, it would remain private, and we wouldn't be able to have access to it in our in our uh, caller file. You can do it directly because it's a single, a single variable, or you can do it in, a, in an object literal, like I just had it. There's a couple patterns here for module exports, but um, as long as it works, works for you, um, that's all good. So we want to create an entry point now, either a server.js or an index.js. Server, server makes sense here. And first, we're going to grab this guy and move him to the right level. Um, so it's actually in the folder here, but once we have our module and we know it's exported, we need to import it in, but because we're on the node, no JS, um, we're going to use require. So we're going to require in, of course, require in express. So express is going to be required in. We're going to create an instance of that application. So we're going to const app equal express. So that's going to give us uh, the express server, we are going to set the port 3000. And then all you need to do to start this, uh, well, let's just grab the books module while we're at, while we're here. So we're going to, we're going to just require in books. And what's really great about express, if you looked at our Node.js HTTP module on how much code, 20 lines of code that serve a server, you'll see now it's much leaner now. Uh, with Express, but let's just run this to make sure we have no errors here. Um, so we're going to just run node server. Node server should return back. Okay, there's a problem with the modules here. So I think I think we um, we got our our path wrong here. Uh, it says modules, not the. Uh, we did we did plural module. It needs to be module, not modules plural. So it needs to be module.export because it's a singular module. All right, so that was a good check. We ran it, no errors. Uh, we should be good to continue here. And here's a little hello world example here. You can see app.listen is all you need to start your, your express server. And it'll take the port with a callback. The callback's really good just to really just let you know that your server's up and running. At the very least, at, on, a, on a certain port, when you're debugging, you could have you know, many different apps you're looking at, but if it tells you what port it's on then you can quickly launch it, it's not going to launch it for you, unfortunately, like in react, but, um, 
you know, it, it helps for sure when you're working with APIs. So we're running this guy and it says it's listening on port 2000. We don't have anything right now that'll serve a, serve a static page. We're not using any middleware. Um, so at least at the very least we're, we're, we're good to go with the server. And that's the thing with express is it's meant to be modular and, uh, very minimal. Um, of course we're setting up, um, server to launch, uh, and we're listening for the event and, and there are named events as well. Like we can, we can, we, there's a few more as we talked about event emitters and all these, everything in Node.js has event emitter as a base class and is firing events. It's a very event driven architecture. So anyhow, we have a web server up, up and running here and we'd like to build out some, some APIs. So that's, that's the goal of this tutorial, um, is to expose some of our logic to the, to the outside world. So, so with express, it's really great. We can add some routes. Um, if you recall with the HTTP module, um, you know, we needed to, we had the raw request and the raw response to deal with and middleware was that code that runs in the middle. So what's really great about this is we can just add this middleware and with newer version of express, Express.json will, we're basically telling it that, you know, we're going to be able to handle JSON requests coming in. It allows our routes to, to perform JSON requests. And you need to, one important thing is you need to set your middleware up first before you start to build your APIs out. That's very important because if you do it after, your API routes will be established before your middleware is set up. Um, it's very important because you can configure your routes and then do a bunch of setup and your routes will never, will never get that, um, that configuration. So here's really great. We have express app and then the verbs get dot. We have the get request part of that, um, that mark, that, that markup. So we just create app dot get, we create a route slash API slash books. It has the callback. That it's very familiar here. It comes with a request, a request dot res, uh, response. We can shorthand it and just call it rec and res. And at the very least, we can test that this is being called, uh, and we can console log to our server. You know, the get request, uh, has been called. Uh, so the request is coming in. Uh, well, let's just, let's just run this here. I'll, I'll explain. I'll explain the, the handshake that goes on. So we'll, we'll run this on port 3000, launch this, and then we can go, we could, we could go to the browser if we wanted to, because the browsers do a fetch by, by default for the get request. So we can see if the server is up and running, it's telling us that there's nothing on the root, the root, um, the root tag. So we can look at our dev tools and we can go to our network tag. And this is what we're going to be. We're going to use quite a bit of our network tag when working with APIs. A bunch of things are, are being called here, but those are based on the, on, on the page itself. Um, so we can filter out maybe our books API, and then we're going to actually run the API slash books in our URL. It says it's called, but this is the handshake I was telling you here. So what's happened is the request comes in, the server is stalling here because to make that communication happen, there needs to be the request. And then the browser is waiting for the response. So right now we've stalled it, but we with, it's good that we have the console log so we could see at least on the server side, the request was, uh, was called. So I want to install node mon, by the way, node monitor, it does hot reloading. So I don't have to keep running node and the file and then canceling because what happens is when you do that, your, your code changes won't be picked up here. Now I'm running node monitor. I can code. And as I'm coding, it'll recompile for me. So a very good tool to have. Uh, and I, I recommend you installing it globally as well. So anyhow, we have the response and we need to, at the very least, you know, end that handshake or that communication. So we need to send something back. You can either end it, just end it directly to say, you know, 
the, 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 the communication has terminated or has been completed. Um, but we're giving indication back to the caller, like, yes, something we, I've got the request. Now we're going to terminate the hand, handshake. Um, this is kind of, at the very least, we're just ending this. It's, there's other ways to do it. So you can see there's no error now. You could see that the page page loaded, but no data came back. But at least we're not hung up here. Um, let's see here. So we need to go back to our server now. Instead of ending it, we should send, send some confirmation back uh, to the caller. So we'll send... At the very least, you know, we're called from the server or the, the, the request was received or whatnot. And that'll give back, that'll give back a, a payload back to the client for this task. So you can see requests received from the server. And now when I, when I go to, to uh, inspect my logs here, There we go. You can see the books there were canceled. So you can see now all the failed requests from before. And you can see they were 404 red. And now we can see that the last one had a, had a response code on the get 200 means okay. And that's our API. So we now have some communication. The other ones were failing before. And there, and you can signal them by the, the red, the red highlight. So this is actually good. Now we have some communication from the back end, uh, an entry point into our application from which we can build on. Um, but we can't always use the browser all, all the time. And there are other tools for that. So here, here we're just going to, we're going to try to return that module data that we had because we had that API. So now we're returning back um, that payload. And you can see here, in the response, that's exactly the mock data that we had from our module. Um, so we have we have a mechanism now to get the data out of the server. Is when we set up on middleware with express.json there, app.use, it knows what we're trying to what our payload is going to be. So it'll do the translation for us a lot of the time. And uh, we talked about body parser and those things for post requests that we we had to install before in versions um, like versions three. Now those things are built in, which is really convenient. So big improvement in, in version four uh, that I can see. The other verb we talked about, the other action is called a post request. And a post request is normally used for like saving or persisting, but more importantly, sending data to the server. Um, so usually get is, is, is retrieving or fetching and posting is sending to the server from the client. So we're going to just quickly do the same thing. We're going to create our user express app. And now we have another verb called post and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to confirm. We've got the request at the server level. We're going to send back a response. We're going to have to deal with the payload at some point, but uh, we'll look at this. Now the difference here though, is um, we're using the post verb. We can't do this from the browser because the browser just fetches. So we're going to need another tool for this. Um, the, the, the get is built in, but it's very, very crude. So we need something called Postman. This helps us with our APIs. We don't need to use a UI. It has all the different verbs for us. And we can, we can even do the basic get request in here and do our work uh, just against our APIs. In, in, in the same way we were doing before. So you can see here, I do a get request. Um, it gives me back information on the status, the payload. I can inspect all of this and I can get the 200 status code okay. And some other information on that request response um, handshake that went on. But now you can see you have all these verbs. So there's post, there's delete, there's patch, all these different ones. But for the most part, we'll focus on get, post and delete. So now I can post, and if you noticed, it's the same URL, but the difference is now, uh, the difference is, is the verb. So you can have same URL, multiple URLs are the same, but they're, they're organized by post. And if you see, I send it, I get the post received from the server. If I check, I see it's been also 
registered on the server as well. And then if we wanted to have the same URL API route and then add a delete verb, we can very easily do that as well. And, and you can see this delete request received from the server. And you can see very quickly how we got set up and running. Like the minimal amount of code to get routes working uh, is, is very easy to get set up. Um, it's a very good starting point now we have to build out an application and an API. So we'll just put the delete verb and verify that it's there. I'm happy with how this looks. We can start to build this out now um, and add some logic.